Firstly, what comes to your mind when you hear the word superhuman? Superman lifting mountains? Flash running faster than light? Spider-Man dodging bullets? Cool ideas. But none of that survives physics. So let's reset expectations. What if a superhuman isn't someone who breaks the laws of nature, but someone who pushes right up against them? Someone who gets tired later than you, learns faster than you, recovers quicker, thinks clearer under pressure. And in this video, we're going to break down how that's already happening, the methods being used, and how far we've actually gone so far. Stay till the end, because you might become the one. Before talking about upgrades, we need to understand one thing. Human limits are not perfect limits. They are evolutionary compromises. Evolution didn't make us the strongest, fastest, or smartest possible. It made us good enough to survive long enough to reproduce. That's it. Muscles fatigue to prevent damage. Pain exists to stop risky behavior. Memory is limited to avoid overload. Focus drops to conserve energy. Now here's the key idea. If technology can safely push any of these limits even slightly, that person gains an edge. Not superhero level, but enough to matter. In competitive environments, military, sports, business, crisis response, even small advantages compound fast. This is where the idea of a superhuman actually begins. Some people are already born with unfair advantages. There are real humans who don't build lactic acid easily, so their muscles don't burn the same way. Some have bones so dense they almost never fracture. Some recover from injuries insanely fast. Some feel pain differently, or barely at all. These aren't powers, they're mutations. Now here's the real question. If biology can do this naturally, can we trick biology? into doing the same thing on demand? And more importantly, is it even possible? Let's tackle this one system at a time. Muscle fatigue is the real reason you stop. Not because muscles are destroyed, but because the body hits internal limits and shuts performance down. Muscles run on ATP, and when energy production falls behind, output drops. As oxygen becomes limited, muscles switch to anaerobic metabolism, producing lactate and the burning sensation. If oxygen delivery can't keep up, muscles choke under demand. Above all of this sits the nervous system. The brain reduces muscle activation to prevent damage long before anything actually breaks. People who resist fatigue better aren't doing anything magical. Their systems are tuned differently. Some are born with more slow-twitch muscle fibers that resist fatigue. Some have higher mitochondrial density, allowing longer energy output. So, can muscle fatigue be fixed? Not completely. Physics still wins. But it can be pushed far beyond what feels normal. Training rewires muscle cells, altitude exposure improves oxygen usage, and hormones shape adaptation. Blood and oxygen technologies show how performance jumps when delivery improves. Often, it's the brain that quits first, and techniques like neurostimulation and biofeedback can delay that shutdown. Muscle fatigue can't be erased, but it can be bent. Performance isn't decided by how hard you push, it's decided by how fast you recover. Two people can train the same way. One improves while the other breaks down. The difference is recovery. Some people are born better at it. Healing faster, gaining muscle with less damage and bouncing back from stress quicker. Same species, different internal settings. Recovery can't be hacked perfectly, but it can be pushed. Hormones accelerate healing, which is why they're regulated in sports but used medically. Blood flow techniques force adaptation with less damage. Cold and heat alter inflammation and circulation. Regenerative medicine targets muscle and joint repair. Even sleep matters. 
because growth hormone spikes during deep sleep. None of this is magic, it's control. Up to now, we've been upgrading the body. But the body almost never fails first. The mind does. People stop when focus collapses, fear spikes, and decisions slow. Once that happens, performance drops instantly. If superhuman means anything real, it applies to the mind. The brain defines us. Every decision, fear, focus, and panic happens there. And despite its power, it has limits. It gets tired, panics under pressure, and processes information far slower than machines. Not because it's weak, but because it evolved for survival, not the modern world. Under stress, fear overrides logic. People freeze and make bad decisions. That's biology doing its job. Some people already operate differently. They stay calm under extreme pressure and make clean decisions when others panic. Elite pilots, special forces, surgeons. Not magic, just different brain wiring. In most people, fear hijacks logic. In some, it doesn't. And this can be trained and enhanced. Stress training reduces panic. Certain compounds improve focus and emotional control. Brain stimulation already improves focus and reduces anxiety. Then comes the real shift. Brain-computer interfaces translate neural patterns into action, and when AI enters the loop, thinking gets support. AI filters noise, predicts outcomes, and assists decisions while the brain stays in control. This already works in humans. Hybrid intelligence doesn't mean thinking like a machine. It means thinking with assistance, and that's why this upgrade is different. The universe follows entropy. Everything breaks down with time, and we can't beat that. But maybe we don't need to fight it directly. That's where the idea of the hybrid human comes in. Not replacing the whole body or turning into a robot, but selectively replacing the parts that fail first. The human body wasn't designed for modern workloads. Spines weren't built for constant heavy lifting, knees for decades of impact, muscles fatigue because chemistry runs out of fuel, and joints degrade because cartilage barely regenerates. Biology trades durability for flexibility. Machines don't make that trade, and that difference matters. The first step wasn't putting machines inside the body, but around it. Exoskeletons share load instead of replacing muscle letting humans lift and carry without destroying joints. The body stays biological, but its weakest points are protected. From there, the move inward was inevitable. Prosthetics began as replacements, but modern ones store and release energy, sometimes outperforming natural limbs, not because they're stronger, but because they don't get tired. They follow physics, not biology. The real challenge isn't power, it's integration. Movement only feels natural when forces transfer smoothly, intention becomes motion, and feedback returns to the brain. When that loop works, the brain adapts and the synthetic part feels like part of the body. Let's ground this. No one is flying bulletproof or immortal, but humans are no longer purely biological either. That shift has already happened. We're in an in-between phase, Part natural evolution, part engineered change. So how do you create a superhuman? You don't flip a switch or invent one miracle upgrade. You stack small advantages. Biology pushed further. Biotech speeding repair, machines supporting the body, AI assisting the mind. Each change feels minor on its own. But together, they change what a human can do consistently. The baseline is shifting and the definition of what it means to be human is already changing. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you want more deep dives like this.